Hello, my name is Björn Asklund. This is my third video about Riemann's hypothesis. The first video is a proof of the hypothesis with Fourier transform. The second video is a visualization of Asklund's condition as a phase plot on the critical line. This third video is a visualization of Asklund's condition in the critical strip. Asklund's condition must be zero for all zeta zeros. Showing that Askeland's condition can be zero only on the critical line proves Riemann's hypothesis. Let's just start with the visualization. The two yellow dots are the first two zeros of the zeta function. The green dots are zeros of Askeland's condition. N is the number of vectors of the zeta function. As the animation proceeds, you will see that as n increases towards infinity, the zeros of Asklund's condition will cover all zeros of this zeta function and prove Riemann's hypothesis. I hope you found the animation convincing. I will, in the reminder of the video, explain the animation in detail and relate it to my proof. I will now explain the visualization in more detail. This is Riemann's functional equation. We are in the complex plane where the real part of S is between 0 and 1. In this area, only zeta S and zeta 1 minus S can be 0. You saw two of these zeros in the visualization as two yellow dots. I simplify the expression in front of zeta 1 minus s. I call that part for a of s. Then I get the simplified version. As I showed in my proof, it is fairly easy to show with Fourier transform that the zeta function as a sum is equal to Riemann's functional equation plus a condition. In order to comply with Riemann, that condition has to be zero. This is a slide from my Riemann hypothesis proof, where I show that Asklund's condition can be reworked with Fourier transform to equation 28. N is the number of vectors of the zeta function. As you see, equation 28 can only be solved when the exponents are equal. That happens for a equals 1 half. As you perhaps saw in video number 2, Asklund's condition can be reworked to equation 35, which are two complex conjugate vectors rotating in opposite direction. The vectors are equal when they pass each other at 0, and 180 degrees. This can only happen on the critical line where the two vectors have the same length. The green dots indicate that Asklund's condition is zero. N is the number of vectors of the zeta function. Setting the phase change to pi radians gives an equation where N can be solved. The distance between the zeros of Asklund's condition goes slowly to zero as shown in the table. This is a small part of the complex plane where you can see the first two zeros of the zeta function as yellow dots. Riemann said that all yellow dots are on a line in the middle of the strip. I say that the zeros of Asklund's condition must be zero for every Riemann zero. Asklund's condition cannot be zero in the red area since the vectors of Asklund's condition have different magnitudes. Asklund's condition can only be zero on a critical line. This slide starts with n equals 1500. You can see the n number above the red area. All the green dots show locations where Asklund's condition is zero. As n increases, you will see that the distance between the green dots decreases. Eventually, as n goes to infinity, the distance between the green dots goes to zero. 
Then Osculon's condition is zero for all factors of the zeta function. Let's run the video again. I hope you found that convincing. Thank you for watching.